Okay, this video we're going to discuss about pivot tables. Now, one of the challenges that I have um, to display this in a video is the different versions of Excel that are on the market. Um, predominantly, Excel 2007 made massive changes to the um, graphical user interface, the GUI. Um, in particular, in Excel 2007, the way you would create a pivot table would be via the Inserts tab. Those of you which are in earlier versions, you would go via the data menu. Now what I'm going to try and do on this video is cater for the best of both worlds. So I'm going to slightly adjust how Excel works so it more behaves like the old 2003 and below version of Excel. So this next bit is just purely for um, Excel 2007 users just to configure their system. After that then we'll go into the, the meat of what we're talking about here. So what I'm going to do is just go up to the top left here and onto the customize quick access toolbar go to the more commands option and if we change the drop down box to commands not in the ribbon scroll down to the P's and you should see the pivot table pivot chart wizard just add that and we now have this icon at the top now we can get started now before we go into the um, pivot table option itself why do we need to use one well in Excel you could have a list similar to this which you can obtain from pcteach.me as an example um, this has 2156 rows worth of information um, and this spans across to the O column where we've got the unit price and quantity loads of different things order dates ship dates country and all that and the whole purpose of using a pivot table is to summarize data into something more meaningful for example I want to see all of this Hanari Khan's um, information appearing as one line I want to know the total order I want to know how much they've spent with us things of that nature which you can do by just scrolling over and doing your calculations but a pivot table can do it much quicker so those of us in 2007, what I would like you to do is as long as your cursor is clicked once only on a cell within the data that you want to use the pivot table on, click on to this icon at the top which we've put in. Those of you which are in earlier versions of Excel, go to the data menu and choose pivot table. This should then bring up the following screen which is your wizard which it asks you step one of three of what you want to do now we have a list of three options the um, Excel list an external data source or a multiple consolidation ranges for the um, purposes of this video I'm not going to talk about consolidation ranges the well without scope of this um, video however these first two need to be discussed um, office list is what we've got in front of us in the background here which we'll be selecting however external data source allows you to select via SQL um, to other data sources such as Microsoft SQL Oracle you name it you can get to it as long as you can use ODBC um, to connect to your data sources we can we can click click on it um, I'll probably bring up a subsequent video um, sort of bridging the gaps between uh, Microsoft Office and SQL Server in a subsequent video. For this though what I want to do is just select the Microsoft Excel list. We do want to pivot table and then click on to next. What it should then do is step two is it brings up the range of cells by now it should have the marching ants across all of your data. Now if the data is not correctly highlighted don't worry you can just click and start dragging to redefine your range. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use control shift right arrow and control shift down arrow which will select it all in one big go. So it's very quickly got it all selected again for us. Now we click on to next and it says where do you want to place it. Um, you can put it in an existing worksheet on a, on a new cell reference but by and large you would choose a new worksheet. Once that's done click on finish. Now again, slight difference between the 2007 and 2003 users, last bit and then we can really get into it, is in 2007 they put everything over on the right hand side in this field list dialog box. I absolutely detest this with a passion you can only dream of. What I want to do is get rid of this altogether. Now a way you can do this in 2007 is over here where you've got this graphic of the pivot table, right click and choose pivot table options and in the display tab tick the box to say classic pivot table layout and click on OK. Now we should be seeing something pretty similar 
in both versions. Those of you in earlier versions of Excel, you should see a toolbar appearing on the screen where you'll be able to select your fields. There should be a field list option on there. Um, and this will then return or show in a dialog box these fields off to the side. So because the pivot table has now um, been created, albeit blank, it does know via the data the actual field headings that we want to um, use in here. So let, let's just start off with something basic. What I'd like you to do is grab hold of the company name with the mouse, drag and drop it into row fields displayed here. And then when you let go, you should see immediately in alphabetical order all the company names popping in. Well, that sound looks quite good so far, but it's not really giving us anything um, meaty at the moment. What I'm going to do is going down the side here is I'm going to scroll down until I find the unit price field and drag and drop that into the data items section just here. When you let go, you should see immediately it's now giving you a total, the total of all the unit prices by the different company names. Thing is, though, this is not absolutely accurate at the moment because what I'm doing is I'm just adding unit prices. I need to actually include and incorporate the quantity so I get the total price of the order, um, which we'll do in a moment. But before we carry on into getting more meaningful values here, what about across the top here? What I could do is I could say, well, I want to look at it via country. So if you grab hold of the country field, drag and drop it on top of the word total. And when you let go, you should see now it's immediately breaking it down again in alphabetical order going acrosswards, all of the different values. And if I scroll across, this goes quite a long way. Um, but you'll see that we've got all these different um, values appearing. Now, what if I wanted to change the way this looked? Well, no problem. Grab hold of country and drag it to the left hand side of company name. Now, what you must notice is when you're dragging, you may see this I beam following you. Can you see it just where the mouse is right now um, in between the company name and Argentina? That's telling you where you want to actually place that field. Now, what I'm going to do is just move it to the left of company name and let go. And you'll see immediately it's grouping it country by company name and giving you the totals. Fantastic. What about the other way around? Well, that's not really going to give you anything meaningful because each company will have its own country, where it's more likely that one country would have many companies. If we wanted to, we could completely swap it the other way around, grabbing hold of company name, chuck it above total. And there you go, you've now just completely flipped around the table, hence its name, the pivot table. Now, I'm going to just move this back quickly, back to the way it was before. So company names on the left, countries across the top. Other things I want to do, well, I've got lots of blanks. What if I wanted it to actually show zeros? Not a problem. Just right click there and choose pivot table options. And in one of the sections, you should see that there's a format area where it says for empty shells, empty cells show and it's got blank, just put in a zero. And when you're OK, there we are. We've now tidied that up. We could put formatting on as well if we wanted to. Again, that's in the um, field value settings and so on, which we'll come to later on. But what I want to do, though, is I'm doing the unit price when really I want to do the unit price and quantity. Slight difference here between 2007 and earlier versions. In the earlier versions, you would right click and choose calculated field. In, in the um, 2007 version, you would go to the formulas button and choose calculated field. In either way, you should come up with the same dialog box. So I'm going to give it the name as calling it um, total cost. You can call it whatever you like. And then the formula is going to be based on the fields down below. So I'm going to choose the unit price by double clicking. And then I'm going to put in the multiply symbol, which is the star or asterisk. And then double click on the quantity to put them in like that. Once I've done that, just click on OK. And I should now have a new total field appearing on the screen. Now, what I should be able to do is by probably going to values, drag and drop and get rid, go back over to the left hand, uh, the right hand side and you'll see I've got total costs now. So if I drag and drop that in, I now get the total costs for each particular area. So there we go, we're getting something a lot more meaningful on the screen. Now, my 10 minutes are almost up. However, what I will show you is just a few other features. What we can do is we could then filter it by a particular um, city by putting it into the data pages option at the top here. And so I could just filter, filter and just say I want to see Berlin. And there we go. It's immediately filtered it. I'll put it back onto all. 
but more importantly which will give you the full power of pivot tables for you to play around with is the actual value itself a lot of people don't know this but let's say I look at that figure there and I go hmm I don't quite know what made up that value if you double click on it what it does is it extracts all the information out into a separate worksheet for you so it's absolutely astoundingly brilliant what you can do with the data in, in just a couple of clicks. The other thing you may want to do just briefly is change it from the total or the sum of total cost. You can double click it there and you can change it to the average if you wanted to. So you can see what the averages costs are, um, minimum cost, maximum cost and so on. And you can do some very basic um, summary information on your data. But with all that information, a double click will give you the results that you're after. So hopefully, just in a whirlwind tour of pivot tables, this should give you a better understanding of what they are and how to use them effectively. Thanks for watching.